Hi folks, Papa Joe here again. How you doing? I know you just left me. Maybe I just left you. Okay. Uh, now then, we was uh, talking about notes from a little sister here. No, she ain't really my sister. She ain't really my girlfriend. She's just a damn good friend. I like to tease her. I like to poke fun at that new husband of hers. They're honeymooners or newlyweders. So I like gouging him a little bit. It's good for him. Builds character, don't you know? Uh, I told her when we was talking that she needed to get a whole bunch of rock salt or curing salt. I think it's the rock salt. Once again, do your own homework. Okay? Don't let me lead you astray. Do a little bit of homework. I give you the idea. You fine tune it. Okay? Uh, get you a couple two or three of those old blue barrels that you see. There's a place to sell them. Get the kind that got the top on it with the little band thing that closes it up. Get you a whole bunch of rock salt. Now, uh, if you have the pig or the cow, dire emergencies, you got your horse. Yeah, I know some of you won't like that, but some nations, they do eat whores. When it comes to living or dying, I'll eat a horse. Ain't no doubt in my mind. Uh, dad, gummit. Well, I'm going to put you on pause. That's mama. Oh. All right, I'm back. So anyway... Get you some of them barrels. Get you quite a bit of rock salt or curing salt. I don't know if they're the same or not. I really don't. Uh, put that salt in one of them barrels so that if you don't have electricity, it's been out for a while, you're having to butcher something, how are you going to cure the meat? Well, throw you a little layer of salt down in the bottom of one of them barrels skin out your meat process it how you want to I'd leave it as big a chunk as possible well I don't know that's kind of up to you but uh, rub that meat down with some salt work it in there pretty good now lay it on top of that salt and cover it up and have a I would suggest an inch or two between the meats Put another meat in there, rub it down with salt, and put it in there. Do the same thing. That's the best way to cure your meat that I know of. That should keep it for a while, I would think. Once again, do your own homework and check it out. That's what I'm planning on doing. So Now, another way to keep that meat, lamps, pay attention. Smoke it. Make jerky. Do it how our grandpas did it, buddy. Uh, Grandma and Grandpa had a bedroom that was called the smokehouse. Guess why? It used to be the smokehouse. So now I did get questioning my father about it before he passed. Because I wanted to know. There was a few of these little things that I just wanted to know. And that's one of them arts that we have lost. Now, part of this, you ain't going to like the sound of it. Sorry. Uh, they would uh, take their hams, rub them down with salt, and all this good stuff, and then evidently quite a bit. Do your homework. Learn how. There will be a video somewhere. You know YouTube. But uh, then they would build them a little fire in there, and they'd start smoking that meat. So, a smokehouse. Well, you ain't got to have one as big as a bedroom. Remember old outhouses? I grew up using one. Y'all might think crazy, but let's say four by four. That ain't that big of a building. And actually, you can hold quite a bit in there. Now, the reason I've been thinking about it is because if we have electricity, the stuff that you do when you're smoking meat, you don't want a lot of hot heat. Uh, uh, heat to it. You want smoke. 
uh, when I'm smoking in my smoker or on my grill, 225 is about the average. Okay. Now, if you're going to make jerky, I don't think you want it that high. Because I know we got a dehydrator in the house and it don't get hot to speak of. So, okay, you've skinned out this cow. You put some of it in them jugs and the barrels. Then slice that. You got that knife in that bucket, right? Remember it? Told you to get it. You need it now. Oh, and get a wet rock. We call them wet rocks. Sharpening stone. Put in that bucket. And you're going to want a file in there too. A decent rasp file for steel. When that axe and hatchet get dull, how are you going to sharpen it? So make sure you got a file. Uh, build this 4x4. Four four. <coughs> now you can do it two or three kinds of ways. Now you can uh, leave it with a wood or dirt floor. And get you something to build you a small fire in there. And slowly feed that fire and let it make smoke. Uh, you can do a concrete base around the bottom and leave a hole there that you can put a cinder block in front of. Move that cinder block to give it air. And you can do something on top with a hole. Either use one of those, uh, uh, find one of those barbecue pit smokers that have done burn out. We'll take stack off it and put it up there. I like reclaiming stuff. I, I don't throw stuff away very well. Which is a habit you already get into. But now you can control your smoke and stuff. Uh, if you have electricity, and I've seen a guy did this with an ice box, an old style ice box. Uh, he got all the plastic and stuff out of it, you know, and put in different racks. What he did, he took an electric skillet. He'd soak some chips, and he turned that electric skillet on, put it in the bottom of that ice box, and he had new racks in there, and he put his stuff in there, and he turned that thing on to like 200 degrees, two and a quarter. It's an ice box. It's well insulated. It worked real good. If there wasn't enough air getting in there. The wood smoked. Good idea. Well, you're talking about the same principle with that center block at the bottom and a control up top. Uh, a third way that you could do it is put you a vent on top. Get one of the little bitty smokers that you see. I mean, you can see the little bitty ones at Walmart, 20 bucks, whatever. Well, get you some kind of uh, flux hose. Like they, you see it, uh, the best kind I could tell you to get would be like the repair type for exhaust, for mufflers and stuff. So get some of that kind of stuff and just run it from the top of that smoker, cut a hole like you would for a dryer vent, stick it right in there. Now you're controlling your fire out here. Now you're not getting no heat in there. So, you know, that's kind of wishy-washy there on how you want to do it. But that's how you can do your smoker. So what don't go in there? You can make jerky, hang the stuff up, keep manning your fire, smoke it that way. So, there you go. Now, another, a couple other videos that I'm going to have my son try to find. For those of you that can get on my wall. What you going to do about firewood? Now, we talked about the axe and the cross cut. I don't think I told you the cross cut. I told Vicky the uh, Nikki the other day about a cross cut, which they have one. Wouldn't hurt you to have one. I prefer the two men. Uh, I want to tell you how to make firewood. Make your own. You listening, Lance? Now check this out. And then I'm going to tell you another version of it where it ain't wood. Uh, take and collect your newspaper and if you talk to your newspaper office they'll probably sell you some they'll give you a little bit but if you really go get into it they'll probably sell you some because that's all they're going to do is sell it to the scrap paper place uh, shred it it ain't got to be uniform fancy none of that stuff just tear the stuff up you don't want to leave it whole 
put in one of the 55 gallon drums it was talking about. Add the water to it. Let it soak for a day or two. I mean, you want it, and every time you go buy it out there, stir it around, mush it around. And it's going to turn into a nasty mess. Now then, and those that don't know, guess what? I smoke. And I'm going to use this as a demo. Take you a tuba for. I would suggest about a foot long. But this is your tuba for by foot long. Alright. Now then, build you a frame around that. Out of a tuba for. Okay. So now you have a tuba for and I'd use screws so you can take it apart. And I don't care how you do it. So long as when you're done, you're going to have this sucker like so. And like so. Okay. So you just built a form with what you built. Now then, take that paper and you're going to want a couple of these out of the middle. Take that paper that you cut that you've soaked in wood, or in water, I'm sorry. Now, have you several of them frames that we just made? Set them down, and you're probably going to want to drill some holes inside that frame. And now you take that paper, and you start stuffing it in them frames as tight as you can, as much as you can. Now then, after you've done did it, here comes my demo again. You like demos? Now, after you've done did this, Here's your frame. You're going to take that one that you built here. Well, the reason you built it around this is so that it will fit right here. So you're going to put this on top. Now, you done filled this whole thing here, plumbed to the top with paper, wet paper. Now, put this on top. All right. Now, then, after you do this, and you can do two or three or four of them, whatever. Stack them up, spread them out, whatever. After you've done this, now you're going to put weight on top of it. So you got your form. You got that 2 by on top to mash it. Now you're going to put weight on top of that. Now uh, you could build a press. Or if you have a drill press, that would work. Uh, set cinder blocks on top of it. You can work it out where you do two or three of them straight up. It don't matter. However you want to do it. But do these and then put weight on there. That weight's going to mash all that water out. Uh, depending upon where you're at, how much weight you got on it, weather conditions, on how long it's going to dry. I shouldn't have to tell you how to tell if it's dry. Once, excuse me, once it's dry, if you can't just push it out of that frame, take them screws out. Now you're going to have paper mache and little two by four, one foot pieces. It's a fire log. It'll work. It'll burn. I've seen a guy doing it. Uh, now, Mr. Lance, I know y'all working on your place. Do your own homework. Follow up on this. Seen a YouTube, and I think they was doing it down in Mexico, Brazil, one of the hot places. Okay, not a lot of rain, and it was hot. They did the same scenario. They took a rear end or the rear axle out of a rear wheel drive vehicle. And they had the uh, old dead gummit where the universal joint goes. They had that thing pointed up and back, just a little bit back. They welded on some bars and put a hitch on it so they could tow this thing. Alright, so this is pointed up. Now I've seen two different ones. One of them, they took the old number 10 wash tub. Ain't that what we called them big old wash tubs? Did you see the old hillbilly taking a bath in it? Yes, I have. Uh, the other one, they took a barrel, a metal barrel, not one of the plastic ones, and cut it off. But they conformed these to fit over where that U-joint used to go. And they took metal and put blades in there, pointing different kind of ways. <coughs> Now what they did is they took and put, made it waterproof, so I guess they welded it. I'm not a welder. Uh, they put this paper mache in here to mix it up. Well, they took concrete, not ready mix. There's a difference in ready mix and concrete. 
Your ready mix has got the sand, the rock, and the concrete in it. Concrete is just powdered concrete. There's no rock, no sand. It costs you a little bit more. Okay? So don't get the ready mix. It costs you $2.99 a bag. That ain't the right stuff. So they take this concrete, and they add this concrete, and I don't know the exact ratio. They added this concrete to that paper mache, and then they drove this thing around a little bit. Pulled it, one was pulling behind a little, well, a big lawnmower. Another one pulled it behind his little pickup. But those blades in there just mix this stuff all up. Well, they had big forms set up with a little bit of rebar. They, after they mixed it up, they came back and they put it in that dead gum form. They built a house out of it. A house. It was pretty cool. Pretty cheap. Now, you think about if you could use that. Now, grant you'd have to do some kind of a slab or something to keep the moisture, keep it up off the ground a little bit. But if you did that slab, you could run that rebar on up Build that form, keep pouring it in there. I thought it was a pretty cool idea. Pretty good idea. So think about that one. That might help you out on something. So uh, there's your inexpensive way of doing a paper mache concrete house. What do you think of that? I thought it was pretty cool. This video is getting a little long in the tooth. I'm ready for a cigarette. My boy won't let me smoke while I'm making these. So, there's number three for you. Yep, this is the third one. I'm uh, sure I'll come up with a little bit more for you. I'll just keep adding to her as I can. Like I said, if y'all come up with some ideas that you want to share, you put them on here. And uh, put them in the comments. Or if you know me personally, shoot me a message, whatever. And I'll see about putting them on here. Now remember, all of this is just suggestions don't go blaming the old hillbilly if you go doing something and you screw it up you get hurt you hurt something else be responsible for your actions all I'm doing is giving you ideas what you do with them ideas on you this is my disclaimer for legal purposes in case you come out here chasing me down and stuff use some common sense folks I know it's a rarity. Use some common sense. Y'all have a great day. God bless you. Remember, he loves you. So do I. Bye.